What's up? I'm Trey from Mouth for War, and you're watching CMS TV. Aiken presents and I of course am Chris Aiken and today on the show it is time to get heavy and when I say heavy I mean really really fucking heavy the name of the band Mouth for War the name of the new release is Bleed Yourself comes out on October the 27th and as I as I just told our guest here this is a sledgehammer to the face it is a brutal slab of metal and here all to talk about it is the lead vocalist of the band, Mr. Trey Roberts. Trey, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. It's great to talk to you. And I can't say enough good things about this record, man. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't, I'd heard the name of your band prior and thought like everybody else, it's a Pantera tribute. Didn't listen to it. <laughs> this one here, your publicist is like, it's not Pantera. You got to fucking listen to this. And I did. And I was like, whoa this is like really really heavy stuff so good Hell stuff yeah. man love it very much love it thank you so much well dude why don't since i wasn't aware of you guys i'd imagine people that are watching are not aware why don't you give us the the two minute history of the band and how we got to where we are today um well <clears throat> i guess i started uh, we we're based out of colorado but a couple of us moved out here from indiana uh, four and a half, five years ago, but we kind of moved out here with the goal to start this band. It was kind of an idea already. I had been writing music, uh, in Indiana all by myself. And I knew some guys out here. We wanted to relocate to a cooler place because we had played out here in a few old bands, which is how this all came together. So, uh, yeah, we made the 18 hour move out here and snagged up some of the best local musicians and Ever since then, we've just been moving. We got we got picked up by Scott at 1126 Records, which helped us with a lot of a lot of things getting started off and getting things moving quickly. We uh, uh, he got us on that that tour with Body Snatchers, one of their first big headliners, and that was a big big booster for us at the beginning of our touring cycle and putting out Life Cast and Glass. So my dog's gonna come help with the interview, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. Um, <clears throat> A lot of uh, gets with with the Pantera thing too. When we started, I feel like we had more of the ideal of moving towards the groove metal thing, and we've kind of grown and built more things into it. So I would say now the name makes less sense, but for in some reason, it still is mouth for to us. If that makes sense, that I can't imagine this band being called anything else, but it has definitely grown into something that doesn't necessarily match the name anymore. Sure, but. Yeah, that's I, I know I've been telling some people about what you guys sound like in my ears and what you guys sound like to me is an extremely heavy version of like a hate breed or in that in that category. Real, real big, uh, you know, drops and real big, real big, you know, guitars, especially, I mean, are just smashing is is that sort of where you want to fit in or are you trying not necessarily to fit into any specific place um yeah in a way we not trying to fit in anywhere but fit in everywhere you know we have uh we have parts that sound like straight up big stadium metalcore and then we've got 
classic hardcore sounds like hate breed and terror and stuff. And we like to mix those sounds. in so we can kind of sit, sit at the table with everybody, I guess, you know, there's a lot of tours that we could fit on and there's a lot of guys that we can hang out with. That makes a lot of sense, but we're still doing our own thing. And that's overall the goal. I think we're doing what, what we want to be doing now, finally too. Absolutely. Well, dude, I, I did go back and I listened to life casting glass and I listened to the EP as well. And you guys, you guys have your own sound. You definitely have a sound that you can hear is you versus the mishmash of the other thousand bands that are in the same world. The one thing that I notice, especially on this one, but with each release is a big increase in production sound. And this one especially is it's like arena sound on the most extreme music so talk a little bit about the production. Who did it? How important was it? And how much did you scrutinize it as you were working on uh, Bleed Yourself? Oh, yeah. that That's definitely one of the things that we're most excited about this stuff is, is the big jump in production. And that was obviously the goal, too. Um, the very it, it, It's kind of funny because the first EP, I tracked it at my house and we sent it to Pete at Bricktop in Chicago, which is who ended up producing Bleed Yourself. Um, we didn't get exactly what we wanted and we decided to produce life casting glass on our own. Um, a lot of people love how that sounds. I produced it myself. So I pick it apart now and I don't even want to hear it, <laughs> but, and that's why we decided to finally go to Pete. He had made with the mix of what I recorded and what he put together on his end. We we're like, we should just go to this guy's studio and just spend our first time together in a studio making sounds and not just meet at my house a couple of times and we'll throw it all together, you know? And uh, yeah, spending that time with Pete and having another person outside the band to help us pick things apart and be like, Hey, what if you hit this note instead? Or what if this was here? Definitely made for some cooler things that we wouldn't have came up with on our own. And yeah, Pete did exactly what we wanted. That's, that's all we wanted to hear when we went in the studio, he sent us the mixes back and we were like, this is, yeah, this is what Mouth War was supposed to sound like the whole time. And he hit it nail on the head. Sure. <clears throat> when, when you go to somebody else, though, especially after you've done a record by yourself, there's always the thought of this guy's going to tell you something. You already know how to record your music. You know, there's always that headbutt thought. Was there any of that that went on where, you know, you guys had to kind of bang heads to figure out what would be best for the songs? Um, surprisingly, not at all. Um, I always knew Pete was a cool guy. I had, I hadn't got time to, to like hang out with him for a while, but I knew he'd be pretty laid back. Uh, I think if anything, we were just scared that we wouldn't get what we wanted after spending that much time and money and doing something like that for the first time. But no, he made it very easy. And I think we went in, I think it, it was very helpful that he had worked on our first EP. He also mastered life casting glass. I forgot to consider that so he, he had been a, a part of our team to some extent just not like everything like that so i think he had already collected a very good idea of what we were wanting and what we were going to try to do so it was really seamless he was he was ready to rock and he was on board with everything and and his ideas that he had were right on par with the kind of stuff that we would do anyways right on now now dude, let's, <laughs> talk, let's talk a little bit about how you guys write and i've interviewed thousands of musicians at this point and it seems like there's one of two ways that bands write either there's one guy that writes it and then everybody else fills in or there's a guy that comes up with a riff and then everybody builds almost like legos you know everybody builds their parts on on top of the riff where do you guys fall um most of the first way on this uh I, I do most of the writing in journal. I, I have a studio in my house and I'm the only one that doesn't work in a kitchen and stuff all the time. So even if I'm not trying to write, I just get bored and I write like crazy. So when it came album time, I was just like, what do you think about this one? And they're like, dude, how, what are you, how are you doing this? Right. And yeah, but um, I would say the last two records, I wrote pretty much all of them, but our guitarist Gabe came up with some stuff in this one that, that really helped me open my mind and do stuff that I wouldn't have done. He would send me something like a super weird riff that I'd be like, man, I, I would never do that. And I think that's a great thing because I can try to build off of this and it's going to give me some, some weird stuff that I would never do. And I think that's why some of the, some of the tracks came together on this one 
in in the coolest way in a different way just the little bits that Gabe threw at me and there's a few things that our basis did but overall it's one guy which I think can uh help keep things in line you know uh if someone has an exact thing they're going for a lot of bands it's probably just the best way to let that guy do his thing and then send it to everybody and they're like well this part's kind of stupid or you know little changes or they're like what if you just extended this or split this off so yeah mostly just me placing things together and then i let the guys just be real with me and tell me what they want and then i think the biggest thing about it is our drummer Our, our drummer is crazy i've been playing music with them since i was 17 right i'll make a make the midi drum tracks where it's just like bare bones and just you know just playing the beat so he knows what goes on and then he'll just be like here's what i'm gonna do and i'm like what the hell was that that was insane and and i think that's probably the biggest factor in what brings my songs together and changes stuff up at the end is mason just going crazy on the drums Right on, man. Well, how important is it for you to, and I don't know how to put this, so I'm going to say it, and if it sounds stupid, just tell me, but how important is it for you to kind of craft the breakdowns that you have and where they fit in the song? Because there's a lot of bands that try it. There's only a few that do it well, you know, and there, there's, and you know this, there's a ton of bands that do it just to do it where they'll just have a breakdown just because that's what they think needs to be there. Yours seem to fit. How, how do you craft that? Do you have that in your head or do you feel like it's missing if you don't write with that in mind or how does that come together? Yeah, I would say in the, in the typical hardcore metalcore kid mindset, that's probably the most important thing to me realistically is, I, I, when I'm, when I'm writing these songs, I'm thinking about how they're going to land in a live setting because I want them to flow when you're listening to them. And I want them to feel like that live. So I always have that in mind. Some of our songs are written off of a cool breakdown. You know what I mean? So maybe that has a big factor into why they sit so well sometimes, but definitely the most important thing. And the probably the thing I spend the most time on is if I, come up with the breakdown. I'll I'll sit on it for so long and try to pull it apart and try to be like, what was I not going to do pretty much? Cause I feel like most bands are just like, all right, here's where the breakdown should hit right here. Just do it, make it just make some chugs and put it there. And then we'll get back to what we do. But yeah, I I really do try to pick that stuff apart and make sure it's going to mean something when it hits every time. And I think that's, that's one of the most important factors of our band for sure. Sure. And I have to imagine when you do this stuff live, the pit just explodes song after (laughs) song after song. That's what we're going for. (laughs) Right on, man. Well, I'll tell you what, dude, let's take a little break and give people a taste of Mouth for War from Bleed Yourself. I figured we would uh, let them hear a little bit of uh, Saturate Me, which is uh, one of the videos that you've put out so far. Uh, Tell us a little bit about this song in the video. Um, This song is... It's a sad song. It's a it's a song that sounds scary, but it's very sad. Um, our our record is about my sister that passed away in 2020, and I, I would say this is one of the most personal and even detailed songs about my my grief. And um, I think Eric did a really good job of making a, a visually intense video for us as well, which all of the whole the whole vampire like scary thing was all him, and it, it all of our videos are it's always Eric's ideas. I'm like, here's my lyrics. And he'll be like, all right, here's a script. And I'm like, how did you like, I mean, he almost, he's, he's really good at almost making a new, new meanings for me to some of these lines just by the visuals he puts together. So we, based off of everything this song does, it has really heavy parts. It's got the melodic part. We felt like it does everything that mouthful war does in one song. So we figured it would be the perfect one to kick off the record with. Right on. Well, before I play it real quick, I just want to ask you, based on what you said, I write books and I write books about myself and some of them are not fun. You know, is it fun or fun is the wrong word, but is it, is it intimidating, I guess, to put real pieces of yourself in music and then have people judging what you're writing when they really can't understand, no matter how clear you write it, what you're thinking in the, in the process. Yeah, it's definitely scary and it's it's weird to let yourself be vulnerable to 
anyone. You don't know, you don't know who's going to listen to that or kind of dig into the lyrics. Um, and in that same sense, I try to write indirectly, I guess, to where you can kind of take your own thing from what I, what I'm writing. You know, it could be it might be obvious to some what I'm talking about, but it could mean something something totally different to anyone else. But I think the thing that helps make it less scary is is the hope that maybe it'll help somebody else going through the kind of stuff that I've gone through, which I've gotten a lot of people that have told me that. And I'm like, man, I I cannot be more genuine when I say like, thank you for feeling, uh, uh, you know, good enough to come up to me and tell me that you struggled with this loss and that I helped you that, that makes me feel really good. And it makes me know that I'm doing it right. And it makes me keep doing it. So those kind of people make it a lot less intimidating. Absolutely. Well, let's let let's give people a taste of it right now. This is Saturate Me. It is uh, Mouth for War from Bleed Yourself out on October the 27th. And this is Chris Hagen Presents. Chris Aiken presents. We are talking with Trey from the band Mouth for War. The new release is called Bleed Yourself. It is out on October the 27th. It is a monster. You definitely need to check this one out. And Trey, I, I just got to ask you, man, there's so many bands out there making aggressive music. And it seems like the pandemic almost created a whole new birth of those bands. Like there's 50 times more than there were in 2020 and probably because everybody was locked up and pissed off, you know? So for, for you watching it and for you as an active member in this, in that community, how hungry do you see people for, for hearing this kind of music and for creating this kind of music? Yeah. um, I think it's at, I'm maybe not an all time high because I feel like this stuff kind of goes in cycles, you know, where bands like this start to get really big. And then, um, but I think the pandemic had a lot to do with uh, not only the writing, but yes, this is the people that enjoy the music and go to shows and stuff. I think everybody's ready for new stuff and a new sound and everybody loves going to shows more than ever before and more supportive. So, uh, there is there is a lot of saturation of the bands, but I think that the community is probably the best for it than it has in a very long time. And I think that's really cool. Sure. Do you think that there's more? Well, hey, are are the, the shows packed? Are there, is there more people than maybe before the pandemic that are at shows? Oh, yeah. At least especially out here where we live in Colorado. But I'm I'm seeing it a lot almost everywhere else we go, especially a big resurgence of like high school kids and then and kids in college fresh out of high school that just think this is the coolest shit there could be which i i thought it was the coolest shit ever when i was that young but i'm they're coming out in masses and i think that's cool here here where we're from they're all starting bands there's probably like 10 bands of high school kids now and i'm thinking man when i was in high school i didn't even know what this kind of music was like specifically and you guys are rocking it so definitely right on man well, dude, let's dig into the record a little bit. I'll start with, I always tell everybody my favorite tune on the record. My favorite tune on this release is Captivated. What a just killer, killer monster that is. Tell me about that song and and specifically about, and you may not even know, but the about the guitars on this song, because they are huge on this one. Oh, yeah. Um, that's cool that you like that one. We, we just got our, our music video back for that one that actually blew my mind so i can't wait to drop that one um 
that is actually one of the songs that Gabe started. He sent me that that opening lead. That's just like something that I would never have came up with. It's not the kind of style I write. Very um, misery signals are like old school melodic sounding. And uh, it was just that straight riff where obviously the next part comes with the really syncopated Meshuggah double bass. And I just, I just pasted that in there. That was a little thing that I had from another song. I sent it back to them and they were just like, what the fuck is that? That's crazy. Like, and yeah, from there that after, after I sent them that part and they were so down with it, I was like, Oh, this song's just going to fall out of my ass now. And it just, it just flowed. And then just the, the weird vibe made for some, made it really easy for me to write some weird lyrics for it. It's uh, one of the more strange songs that I've ever written lyric content wise. I, I actually, I wrote the song about, a mushroom trip where I was hanging out with my cat essentially. And uh, all the, all the weird things that I was seeing and connecting with my cat it, it's kind of weird to say, cause I don't usually believe in stuff like this, but I, I almost feel like I was connecting with my sister's soul through my cat that I've had oh. for a long time. And, and that's what I wrote that song about, which I've, I've never let a story like that come out of myself. So I think that made the song extra weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it's a, it's definitely a great tune, man. The other really, really strong, and they're all strong. I mean, it, it is a great record. But the other really strong song for me is Shattered Self, which uh, I'm assuming is extremely personal, and but yet just a great tune. So tell me about that one. Um, I think that one was actually one of the last ones that I wrote for the record. And the goal was just bouncy, like make it real bouncy and jumpy the whole time with a a lot of transitions that just come at you faster than you can know what's going on. My lighting has changed, that's all good. <laughs> but there we go. Um, yeah, that's also a personal favorite on the record. And that's one of the next ones we're going to put into the live set. Cause we're so excited to play it, but really we just wanted it to be fast and, and just moving the whole time. There wasn't much, uh, much deep thought that went in the, obviously the same, same amount of thought, but we just, we sent it with that one, just breakdowns and jumping. <laughs> right. No doubt, man. Well, dude, in the studio, and this is, I'm an old guy, so I've been around bands for 30 years or whatever at this point. And in the studio, it, it's a hundred percent of the time guys always are willing to fight to get their piece of the, of the song in that little extra drum piece, that little extra guitar riff, you know, that extra line of vocals, whatever it is that you guys all have. And I think the, you know, that is always the magic is finding where to cut, where not to, where to fight for it and where not to is usually always where the magic comes from. You guys not only do that well, but you do it and keep the songs really, really disciplined and short. And I'm using the word disciplined on purpose because I honestly believe bands that do eight, 10 minute songs are just noodlers. You know, they're, 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 they're not disciplined enough to say what they need to say, get in, get out for you guys. Are there a lot of arguments and, and pushbacks and whatnot to, so that you could keep the songs within the structure that you've identified as mouth for war? Um, no, not necessarily. And I think that also has to do with us just being on the same page when we're creating, I think, uh, a uh, part of what helps us come across and stay in the pocket as like kind of hardcore realm is the short songs, you know, uh, not wasting too much time repeating riffs. And that, that personally for me and a, several of us was one of the biggest goals here is to not have parts that repeat, not have choruses and stuff that when it comes time to play live, we're like, Oh, this part's coming back. Nice. It's just, we just wanted to, to keep hitting and keep coming. If, if I can have this two and a half minute song, that's just full of riffs that keep coming. Not like, Oh, they did this already. Then if we can do that, we we're rocking, we're, we're doing what we're trying to do. And I feel like that was pretty easy amongst all of us. Just you get find in the right pocket where it's like, well, this one feels done, man. This is full of just some crazy stuff. So let's just wrap it up. I feel like everybody was pretty on, on board with that and made it really easy to pull off in this situation. Right on, man. Well, dude, you mentioned touring. Let's talk about touring. I know on the press release, there's a few shows announced. I'm assuming you guys are going to go at it for real in 2024. 
Uh, so talk a little bit about what you guys are planning for the next 12 months. Honestly, we don't have much that we can say yet, but we can say we're going to stay as busy as we can. Just, uh, whenever, whenever life casting glass came out, we didn't have the privilege to do that. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, we were mid pandemic and it was really scary putting out a record that way, but we're going to take advantage of what's going on across the world right now with music. And we're going to, we're going to send it for sure. All all of us are road dogs. We've been doing this forever and we're ready to try to do it as hard as we can now with this, what we feel like is the best music that we've written. So sure. we're going to be everywhere and hopefully, hopefully Europe, Canada, anywhere that they're willing to take us, we'll be ready to go and play. Right on. <clears throat> Ideally, would you go out with a younger band like, like you did with body snatchers or would you want to go out with, you know, a, a super established band, but you would get less time and less stage and all that. Like, a, I don't know, soul fly. I'm just throwing one out there, but you know, which, which would make more sense for you guys. Yeah. You know, uh, we'd like to think that we're going to be in the pocket where we can do a lot of both and spend our time doing a lot of both. We want to, we want to be able to go out with like a cool hardcore band that's pulling heads with us and do shows like that. And then come home and go out with like, a band that's been around forever and be able to do stuff like that. New bands that are popping off. But uh, we just, we want to try to do our best to really mix it up. Cause like you said, like we said, we could fit with like a deathcore band, like body snatcher and stuff like that. But we could fit with a classic metal band if they thought we were cool and wanted to take us out. So we'll be just ready to roll with it really. Right on, man. Well, dude, where should we send people to keep up with you guys and tour dates and to buy the product, not just listen to it, but actually buy, buy actual pieces of product and all that good stuff. Um, right now we have some vinyl and stuff out, uh, our website, uh, M4W worldwide has stuff on there all the time. And then obviously the Monarch heavy website keeps up with their artists and lets people know like where to find us. But realistically we stay we keep everything updated on instagram it's probably the best place but we try to keep all of our announcements moving there that'd be the best place to like find everything for us in one spot and what's the handle on instagram um all of our <clears throat> all of them are at mouthful war co okay awesome. so twitter and facebook as well you can find under the same handle very good all right, man. Well, let's wrap this one up with uh, the video for Under the Gun. Um, great tune. Another another sledgehammer to the gut. Um, t- tell everybody about this uh, this song and this video to wrap it up. For sure, yeah. Under the Gun was uh, one of kind of the mid songs we wrote in this cycle. Um, but I think it was when, as soon as we wrote it, I think we knew it was the first one that we wanted to put out as far as uh, – announcing the label because you know we did the label announce and then the album announced with saturate me that one is just it's just a mosh song we picked the heaviest song on the record and uh, the heaviest song that we've done in general on purpose just to come out the gates like here's this we're fucked in the head here you go <laughs> and that was the goal we had eric we were like eric we just want to do a music video with just all of our friends moshing and just partying and having a good time and we played ldb in louisville and that night we were just like everybody come to this abandoned place tomorrow at this time we went out and put flyers on everybody's windshields probably 100 200 cars while some bands were playing and yeah it turned out to be a great time and a perfect way to kick off this record cycle for us with just balls to the wall song right off the bat right on man well one more time the band is mouth for war the album is bleed yourself out on october the 27th and let's check out under the gun right now it is mouth for war right here on chris aiken presents <laughs>